So as you can see here, uh, this little yellow character is us, and then these red ones are enemies. Um, and we can move, and we can attack. The, no the numbers are our health values. Um, you can see some characters have more speed than us, that one there. We can restart, and there's level generation. Um, the walls have collision, all the enemies have collisions. Um, and just to show in the background, when we go into debug mode, we can see the grid in action here. So you can see now, instead of the health values, we just have everything for the grid values. So you can watch everything kind of move about. So yeah, it's not super complicated, but I think it's a good starting point and uh, should hopefully lead to some cool things. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new project. So first things first, um, well, we can save our project and we can start making our sprites. So I'm going to be working with squares, specifically 20 by 20 squares. Um, and I'm going to be centering them. So this can be modified, obviously, but for the, the way that I'm going to be programming, this thing will be specifically for working with square-based things that are centered. So you might need to make some modifications if you decide to do otherwise. Um, so we're going to make a player, and we're going to make a wall. But that's all for now. Um, and we're going to go into backgrounds. And we're going to make so this will just help us keep track of the tilings. Um, we're going to go make a room now, and it will be 200 by 200. We're going to be doing a uh, 10 by 10 game board of 20 of 20 by 20 pixels. I'll go ahead and that set that speed up. We'll make a view just because this is a very small screen. So the view will just make it you know easier to see. And in the background, we're gonna put this background. So now we have this nice tiling, which will just make it much easier to comprehend when we're actually looking at the game. Um, and now We'll go ahead and make our controller, and we'll make a player object. Nope, that's wrong. And lastly, we will make a wall. There will be more stuff, but for now, this is all we're going to do. Don't need to do any code for um, any of these, really. We're going to go ahead and put the controller in the room, and that's the only object that we'll be manually placing in the room. The controller will be doing all the object creating and all of the manipulations uh, by itself. So this, the room is done, pretty much. Um, one last thing we're going to do is go into Game Settings, go into Windows, Graphics, turn this thing off because it's obnoxious. Um, I'm also just going to go ahead and make a font. Mm, 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 mm. I really like these uh, Chevy Ray fonts. You can get them on itch.io. I will link them. They're pretty good. Yeah, yeah that's the one. Okay. Um, so let's get started. We're only going to be working with the controller code for now. Um, this first part is just going to be focusing on getting things set up and some basic uh, level generation in the grid. And we're also going to set up our debug environment so we can actually visualize the grid in our debug mode. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do um, our create. So first things first. Um, We're going to do the all important randomize. If you don't do this, then you'll get the exact same result every single time. Um, it's actually okay to, we'll leave this off for now just because it helps for initial debugging to make sure things are functioning. Um, so this first thing I'm doing here, um,
So this is, again, I'm assuming that we're working with square tiles. So this is just the dimensions of our tiles in pixels. Um, and then we're also going to have the dimension of our grid, which will be grid width. This can be modified, of course. You can make it whatever size you want. Um, but this is just what I'm going to be working with. Um, so then we're going to go ahead and create our grid. So we're just going to do grid. So simply it just creates a grid uh, with our preset grid width and grid height. So pretty, pretty simple. So now that we've done that, we're going to go ahead and create our, um, well, we're going to start putting um, our stuff in the game. So I'm going to be, I'm not going to be using random generation for the walls. The walls are just going to be an outside perimeter. That being said, I will, even though they're always going to be in the same place, I'm still going to make a like an actual encode wall placer. So we're gonna do that now. So this is just gonna be a nested for loop for creating our walls. So what this code here is going to be, is it's going to go through all the values in the DS grid, and it's going to check if it is equal to either, either the X or the Y is equal to zero. So pretty much that'll just check all of the edges, and if it is on an edge, as in if it is zero or if it's um, grid height minus one or grid width minus one, which is just the opposite edge, then it will place a wall there. So. So this is where we're going to be, this is going to be weird for a moment here. So um, well, let's let's address this right now. So what I want to do for this, since we're going to be having uh, pixel coordinates and grid coordinates. Um, we want to have a really easy way to convert bit from uh, pixel coordinates to grid coordinates and vice versa. But it gets a bit weird since I'm centering things, it, it gets a bit complicated. So what I'm going to be doing is making a script. Well, let's do this one first. So um, what this is doing is it's taking an input, which is a pic it assumes it's a pixel. So for instance, if I guess realistically, since it's centered again, it would be like 70 by 70. So that's what this input is. So we'll call this 70. So 70 minus OBJ controller or, uh, dot dim, and dim, remember, is the dimensions of our tiles, which is 20, divided by 2. So that's 10. The only reason I'm doing this is to factor out the uh, the centering, so it gets it to uh, a zero, zero. So this is just saying 70 minus 10 goes down to 60. So now that's in, um, that's factorable into uh, 20. So that's evenly divisible, I mean. So then it just does uh, 60 divided by obj controller dot dim, which again is 20 for our tiles. So that's uh, taking it down to three. So then we're gonna make another one of these. Um, for the opposite, going from grid to pixel. So 
So um, again, this is doing the opposite. So instead of 60, we would have uh, three here. Um, so it's just multiplying the three by 20, which would be um, 60, and then adding obj controller.dem divided by two, which is just making it centered again. So it becomes 70. So now that we have these nifty little functions, we can really start being a lot more efficient with this because we're going to be using these functions very often. Um, so now that we have placed our objects, our walls, we need to make sure that we're actually changing them on the grid as well. So Okay, so I'm setting them to three. Um, the grid that I'm going to be doing here, uh, zero is going to be empty. One is going to be player. Two, enemies. Three, walls. And four, items. So this will only really matter for collision detection and for level generation. So we'll just go ahead and... Uh... So the player is going to be different because we're going to be placing them randomly. Um, and this is pretty easy to do since it doesn't... Like, there's, there's you can't really get this wrong. It'll be a bit more complicated, well, only a little bit, when we're placing enemies, but we won't do that quite yet. So we're going to create some new variables. So we're just generating some random coordinates to put the player. Um, these numbers here, I guess what I should be doing is uh, grid width minus two because uh, you don't if you you can't do minus one because that would put them on top of walls. Um, so this is just putting the player within the perimeter of the walls. That's all. And then once we have that coordinate, we can just go ahead and place the player. And once again. Um, just to further explain how this is working, this is just making it so much simpler for us. So now instead of having to do a random for pixels, we can just do a random for our tiles and then just convert it to pixels after we have the tile. Um, and the same goes for up here. It's just going to make things a lot more simple. Ho hopefully it makes sense. Um, And lastly, we're going to go ahead and also set the grid for the player, for the player's location. OK, so now let's also go ahead and do some general stuff. Um, let's do key press escape. Well, we'll do this. And we'll do key press R. And we'll do a game end. So you need to do the game end so you can actually delete these uh, So this is important to do, especially when you're doing the restart key, because it'll make memory weird if you don't. So let's go ahead and run it. Oh, I didn't turn that off. Oh, no. OK. How 
How did I do this? Okay. It's okay. I need to turn this off anyway, because it's annoying. Uh, where is this? There it is. Yeah, sure. Okay. So when we hit restart, we've got the player going in different locations. Um, let's just go ahead. I mean, that seems to be working. I'm pretty sure it's, it's good. We'll turn randomize back on. And now let's do one final thing. Um, let's set up our debug stuff. So So we're just going to make it so when we're in debug mode, we can see all the numbers, all the different values of the DS grid. So we're just going to have it. Uh, this is the only reason I even had our font set up already. Um, I need to set it though, I guess, huh? So the minus five thing, that's like just, it just looks best that way. Same with the minus seven. Okay, so again, all of this is, oh, what did I do wrong? Okay, so again, all that this is doing is, it's just looping through uh, our entire grid, and then it's retrieving the value at it, each uh, point, at each tile, what the value is. So it should just be retrieving a three for each um, wall, a one for the player, and a zero for everything else. And when we start having more stuff, like enemies in particular, this will be very useful. Um, and let's also just go ahead and set so it looks nice. OK. So let's go ahead and run it in debug mode. That seems pretty good to me. And when we restart, it does seem to be moving correctly. Not getting any of the walls. Uh, so yeah. Uh, I think that's going to be all for this first one. Pretty, pretty basic to begin. This is just setting up our environment, really. Um, so in the next one, I'm going to start working on getting the player moving and making it so the player can check for collisions so you can't walk into walls. Um, and then soon after that, we'll start placing enemies and get enemy pathfinding and then making so stuff can attack and, you know, all that, all that stuff. It'll be good. Um, all right. So that is all. See you then.